Dolphins fans. Welcome in, Dolphins, today. I am Will Scott. The Dolphins might have a bye week. We don't take a bye here, though, on Dolphins Day. Still getting you guys daily Dolphins content. And today's show is actually going to be about the Dolphins' bye week and the to-do list that comes with it. The Dolphins do not play, but there is still work to be done for Mike McDaniel and Chris Greer. And the Dolphins are in a great spot heading into their bye week. They are 7-3, and three, ahead of the Jets, ahead of the Bills, and ahead of the Patriots. It is a very difficult division, arguably the best division in football, but the Dolphins lead it right now with a 7-3 and three record. I want to know, is we, before I go into my five-step to-do list right now, what should be number one on the to-do list? Go down and let me know what should be number one on the Dolphins' bye week to-do list. Number one should be finding wherever the heck Byron Jones is. Where is Byron Jones, Jeremy Chuggs? We haven't seen him. We're looking. Where are you at, Byron Jones? I haven't seen you. It's frustrating. You had the off-season cleanup surgery on your ankle back in April or March. You're supposed to be ready by training camp. Then you're supposed to be ready by the regular season. Then you were supposed to be ready by week five. It's week 10 and week 11 now, technically, and you're still not back as we do take a look here at the Dolphins' cornerback depth chart. Uh, Justin Bethel is on the verge of uh, completely overtaking Igbo for uh, that second corner spot. Cater has been the starting nickelback. He's been fantastic. X is our guy, even though he hasn't been uh, as good this year. And then also Keon Cross. And so it'd be huge for this defense if you could get Byron Jones back. But thank goodness for Cater Kohu. I mean, where would we be without this guy? You lost Nick Needham for the year. You lost Trill Williams for the year. I don't know where this defense would be without the UDFA out of Texas A&M Commerce, who probably went un unnoticed throughout the draft process because he was playing at a Division II school. A&M Commerce this year is FCS, but last year they were Division II. So thank goodness for Cater Kohu. But you got to get Byron Jones back healthy sooner rather than later. A lot of people have been telling me, even since week one, that, man, the bye week, maybe the bye week is when we'll get him back. We'll see. But if Byron Jones comes out of that tunnel – against the Texans, I'd be pleasantly surprised. Will Byron Jones play this season? Type P for play or type W for won't down in the comment section. Go down. It is the pinned comment. Reply to it when you get a second. I never thought I'd say this. Keep the offensive line as is. Don't touch the offensive line. Don't do anything to it. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. And the O-line's been fantastic the last couple weeks. It's a miracle. Uh, you know that song by Barry Mandelow? I I've, been, I've been singing that song the last couple weeks. The offensive line has been great. Shout out to Matt Applebaum, the offensive line coach, and the rest of this coaching staff. Armstead has been playing the last couple weeks. That's been huge. Robert Jones has slid in for Liam Eichenberg and has been much better at left guard. Connor, his snaps can get better, yes, but the blocking has been really good from Connor. Give him credit. Robert Hunt is the right guard, has been one of the best guards in the league, and Brandon Shell has certainly done a more than serviceable job as the starting right tackle. Get this, guys. The offensive line has not allowed a sack in the last two games and have only allowed two sacks in the last four games since the return of Tua. And remember about a month ago when the Dolphins had three straight games where their starting quarterback got hurt and I was freaking out about the offensive line? Well, luckily you've gotten Armstead back. Luckily, Robert Jones is now the starting guard and Brandon Shell is starting over Greg Little. Uh, so that's huge. But you do have Austin Jackson near 100%. You do have Liam Eichenberg slated to return here in the coming weeks. But just keep the starting offensive line as is. The five guys that are starting right now should remain the starters on this team. What is your confidence level in the offensive line? When I when I asked you all this question last month, a lot of us were saying zero. Now I'm saying like a seven or eight. The offensive line has been much, much better. Speaking of the offensive line, get Teron Armstead 100%. He's barely practiced this year. He's been on the injury report pretty much the entire season. Get him to 100%. He's dealing with that toe issue. He's barely practiced. He's, it feels like he's questionable for every game. 
but he legit might be the third most valuable player on this team, only behind Tua Tungavailoa and Tyree Kill. Cannot put into words how valuable he is. Keep in mind, when he was out, think about how poorly the offensive line played. We had all those injuries to our quarterback, so you got to make sure Armstead's on the field. Get him healthy during the bye week. Guys, you can go bet on the fins all season long at chatsports.com slash bet. Go to that promo code, Dolphins125. I should say put in that promo code and go to that link to pick up a 125% deposit bonus. That means if you put $100 into your account, you're going to start with $225 in your account. It's a great deal. Go and take advantage. Chatsports.com slash bet. Promo code, Dolphins125. You can go bet on the two MVP odds, anything you want to bet on. Take a look at this. Tua has skyrocketed up the MVP odds list. He was way up there start of the season. Now he has the second best MVP odds only behind Patrick Mahomes. So go and bet on Tua to an MVP before he overtakes Mahomes as the betting favorite here to an MVP. Number four on my to-do list, bring in some competition for Jason Sanders. I'm not saying cut Jason Sanders right now, but bring in some guys to practice to compete with him for the starting job, maybe sign one guy to the practice squad, and if Sanders struggles again, call the guy up immediately because Jason Sanders has had a really bad season, just 13 of 17 on field goals this year, missed two extra points last week. Taking a look here at some possible replacements. Chandler Stadden was the best kicker in college football last year, but for some reason has not gotten any NFL interest. So he's still, he's probably on his couch right now. He's probably out there and available. Uh, hey, but hey, Jeff Saturday, he called him off the couch, and he's uh, he's been pretty good for the Colts as the interim head coach. But he was 20 for 20 on field goals last year. Chandler Stadt in Appalachian State. Elliot Fry has some NFL experience. Jonathan Garibay was the uh, was going to be the Cowboys kicker, but kind of struggled in camp. I believe he deserves a chance. He was one of the best kickers in the country at Texas Tech last season, a 94% uh, field goal percentage. Cole Murphy. You might have not heard the name, but remember the name because he was the best kicker in the USFL last season. And then Cameron Dicker uh, right now is the Chargers kicker, but when their starting kicker comes back, they might put Dicker back on the practice squad or waive him, take advantage when that happens, when that happens, when Dustin Hopkins comes back. Guys, help us get to 34,000 subscribers. We're so close. Need about 100 more. Go down. Subscribe the channel. Help us get to 34,000 subscribers on the channel. Number five on my to-do list here. It was find Emmanuel Logba's replacement. And, it, and I do believe they have done that. They have signed Brennan Scarlett, bringing him back to Miami after waiving him in August. He reached an injury settlement. There was a loophole for him to come back. Played 13 games for the Dolphins last season. Ogba tore his triceps last week. We talked about Scarlett as a possible replacement, which, again, is why you should go down and subscribe to the channel. We were all over this. But Scarlett would be, uh, would, be, would be good to bring up to the active roster. So Cameron Good is still a possibility. Josiah Bronson is on the practice squad. They signed Scarlett to the practice squad. So if they do bring him up to the 53, here's what the edge rushers on the fins would look like. Zach Sealer, Brennan Scarlett, Jalen Phillips, Melvin Ingram, Bradley Chubb, and Andrew Van Ginkle. Let's revisit the list here. So number five, check. Thanks, Willie Fins. Number one, find Byron Jones. Get him back in the in the building. Number two, keep the offensive line as is. Number three, get Armstead 100% with a toe. And then number four, bring in some competition for Jason Sanders. Guys, be sure to follow me on Twitter at WillScott44 if you have any other questions about the Fins. Also on Instagram at Willie Fins.